Guess what I got in the mail the other day? This little brochure letting me know that an H Mart was open in the old Stop and Shop location. And it came with a coupon, so you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk there. It's about a half hour walk in this very cold weather, but I think it's gonna be worth our time because $10 off of 100, 10% off. Who can say no to that? TBH, I'm absolutely exhausted from COVID, but I cannot turn down. <laughs> A 10% off at H Mart, y'all. Besides, who am I even if I don't make content? Just for clarification, I am COVID negative. But some things in life never quite leave you, you know? I forgot to bring my headphones. This is gonna be a long walk. It's getting to that point where it's so cold, I just cry for no reason. Probably would be easier to see if I didn't have a mask on, but you know, safety first, kids. So we have arrived and I just want you to prepare yourself because this place is immense, okay? This location used to be a stop and shop and Aaron found out less than a month ago that it closed. We had no idea, but they did an amazing job turning this place around. It is as big as the last stop and shop, but somehow bigger perception wise because you walk in and it is chock full of space and inventory and people and yet you don't feel crowded. It feels like it's a wonderland and a museum all at once and you just want to throw all your money away because the prices here are actually pretty decent and you're going to find so many things that you never knew what they were and you're just like YOLO and you know what? I did. I just YOLO'd and even though I came here looking for a hundred bucks worth of stuff, I mean, spoiler alert, I did not stay under budget. And when, um, when, when I checked out and I saw half of my belt already surmount to $86, I knew I was in trouble. I immediately started putting away some of the oranges I had grabbed and the seaweed that I grabbed. But I did not, my brain did not work fast enough to put stuff back fast enough and I just, I just ate it. I just, you know what? Ever since mom died, it just made sense to me that I would get myself what I want to get myself and I would try things food wise and otherwise and I would see what else is out there and I think I owe it to her and to myself somewhat to just live a little live a little harder live a little deeper live a little happier and you know put it all on the table put it all on the line watch it crash and burn sometimes that's the excitement right Hashtag make life exciting folks. So just a couple of things to note about this H Mart. It is amazing. It has all these specialty Asian ingredients. Plus it's just like a normal grocery store. You still have all of your Goya and whatnot, you know, salt, the whole shebang. And their carts are so smooth. I've never had such a mobile moving cart before. I don't know why I'm gushing over a shopping cart, but the the turns are smooth and the movement is not squeaky and just like mwah, amazing. 10 out of 10 carts. I want to warn you guys that this place is big. It is amazing. It's a wonderland, but there is so much to cover here and you got to treat it like it's a museum, okay? It's like the Met Museum where you can buy all of the art. What you have to understand, I just you just you just got to pace yourself. I didn't pace myself. I spent 2 hours here. By the last half hour, I was absolutely exhausted. I had no idea where I was. The disorientation from my COVID fatigue was kicking in. I felt like I had ADHD. And I, I guess, you know, getting distracted by all of these amazing food stuff and home items and freaking Hello Kitty toilet paper was the reason why I ended up spending a hundred and fifty dollars after the coupon was factored in I 
yeah, so that, you know, amazing place, though. Highly recommend that you come here if you're in the neighborhood. You gotta check it out. Uh, the best that this Sunnyside slash Long Island City border has to offer, for sure. We walked like this for 40 minutes, but we made it. We got no shots of the checkout. We got no shots of walking back. We had the objective of spending $100 so we could use our 10 off of 100 coupon. We ended up spending almost $150 with the coupon added in it. I just, I don't even know what happened. And uh, I had to carry it all back. Now the question is, where do we put it? <laughs> I think when you combine the effects of grief and long COVID and just having no structure in your life, you do some weird manic shit, man. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to drink some water and rest. Cheers. Mm. <coughs> and the second thing I'm gonna do is tell you how much everything cost. Read it and weep it, folks. This video better earn me some any or I will be pissed. <laughs> Please. Better look full crazy for this. Sorghum noodles, $2.99. Shirakiku miso, $6.49. Toasted wheat cake, $1.99. Durian sticky rice, $2.88 on sale. Quail eggs, $2.99. Preserved duck eggs for grandma, $4.99. Three scallions for $1.99, and then sesame, aka perilla leaves, $1.50 each, two bunches, $3. Cilantro for $0.99, cents. we got some hot spicy pepper powder for four bucks. Honey twist, $1.29. Yes, chips spicy, $2.99. We got some mango steam at $5.99 per pound for $8.21. These better taste good, I've never had them before, I've always wanted to try them, so today I was like YOLO, but to be honest, they don't feel great. They feel like they're dry, so. <sighs> we got two passion fruit for $2.98, we got some balsamic vinegar for $2.99, black soy sauce, look at that cute label. $4.49, we got some Ajax cleaner for $1.49 because they are all like $4 now for some reason. They used to be a dollar, I remember those days. Those days don't exist anymore. Anyway, we got some sesame oil for $11.99, which is amazing because I thought it was $17.99 on the label, but whatever, YOLO, I'll take it. We got some fresh chestnuts for $5.51 at $1.99 a pound. We got some konyaku noodles for $4.99. Now these mom used to make me eat in the block forms. I hated it, but in the honor of mom, I thought we'd try it again in a different form. Maybe I'll like it. We got a bag of prepped chestnuts for 99 cents. We got some sliced rice cakes for $2.99 on sale. After going through several options of fish cakes and fish balls, I picked a bag that was $7.99. It looked really amazing with a lot of variety. And I also went with a bag of fish cakes for $4.99. I love these. They are usually prepped cold cut style with like gochujang and different kinds of spices. I don't know. A little tiny tub of it is usually three, four bucks. So I figured why not just try to make it myself. We got a package of Chinese style sesame pancakes for $2.99. Maybe we'll cook some up for grandma tomorrow. And we got some bok choy, two bags, 98 cents and 128. We got some burro bananas, four for 73 cents. We have a cacao fruit. This rang in at $11.39. What was I thinking? I don't know. It was $6.99 a pound and I just never saw cacao fruit before and I have no idea what to do with it. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yucca was on sale for 49 cents. I have never cooked yucca before, so 67 cents for this piece. We got a carton of organic silken tofu for $1.29. Peanuts for $4.99. These look really nice and slender. I think they're gonna be really crunchy once we roast them. And it's three pound bag, so it works out to about, I don't know, 167 per pound. Not too bad. We got a bag of spicy corn snacks for $2.99. Correction, these are corn noodles, not corn snacks. Corn noodles. Have you ever seen these? And we got some roasted eel for $11.99. Regular price was 18 bucks, so I don't know, savings? <laughs> there was an amazing fish selection, and they had these amazing looking smoked fish and between the white fish and the trout, I went with the trout. It's slightly higher unit price, but smaller commitment and smaller overall price, $10.29. We got some fermented soybeans, natto, for $2.99. Now these, I bought a whole box of them from Japan when we visited Tokyo. I brought them back, tried to save them. They ended up molding in the fridge. 
heartbreak. That was over probably five years ago now, so redemption time. Natto's original price was $3.99, it was on sale for $2.99. Next up, we got some yellow yam, $2.09. I've never had yam yam before, so when I saw it, I was like, we owe it to ourselves to try what actual yam is. Next up, we got some bitter melon, $1.99 per pound. This particular bitter melon was 82 cents. Bitter melon is one of those vegetables that I hated eating growing up because mom always made me eat it, and yes, it is very bitter, but in honor of mom, we will eat it once again. Chinese eggplants were on sale for 99 cents. They are the superior eggplant, period. 117 for all four of them. We got some lily roots, aka lotus root, 194 for our piece, and we have some Chinese green papaya, 188 for this big old melon. Somehow that came to 156 80 cents. We got the $10 off, so we paid 146 80 cents. I don't Why is everything so expensive? <laughs> How did I miscalculate all of this? I don't, my skills, they're non-existent. Originally, I had also picked up these oranges that were imported from Korea, but thank God I put them back. Same with the seaweed. I don't know, I could probably put a lot of this back, like the cacao. It's weird because I think ever since mom died, I've inhabited this mindset of just do it because you don't know when everything's just gonna not be there anymore. So today when I saw the things that I've always wanted to eat, I grabbed them. It didn't cost me that much. So this week we will be eating our meals on the table that mom has left for us. This table has been in my family since the late 90s when we immigrated here and I'm really happy that I got to keep it. And for once, maybe, people will stop yelling at me to sit down and eat. Yes, it's currently a mess. I thought I'd leave it organic for you to see, you know, how real people live. We'll clean it up, don't worry. And the third thing I'm gonna do is to clean my kitchen so we can figure out where to put everything. We got a to-do list. Two things down, one thing left to go, let's clean our kitchen. My goal is to clear this counter so we can put our shelf-stable produce on there and then we're gonna organize the fridge so we can put our perishables in there. Freezer space is very limited, but hopefully I didn't buy a lot of freezer things. So basically how I'm gonna organize my fridge is to put all of the pre-existing and leftover food prepped up on the top shelf so that I remember to eat them and to segregate them from our new stuff. I'm hoping that this is enough space for all of our refrigerated items. I've pushed all of the pre-existing fresh produce off to the left side of the fridge so that the right side can be reserved for all of our H Mart haul. Now let's see how much shit we have. That's a lot of shit. Too much one can say. I'm gonna go ahead and unpack these and then we'll sort. I think that's way too much food. All right, time to push it away. get it. How is all of that so expensive? I don't know how much longer I can afford this life. Because I'm already very exhausted and terrifyingly hungry, let's eat some chips. Oh god, it feels good to say. Um, nobody wants COVID, but if you do get COVID, try not to get long COVID. Not that you have any control over any of this. It sucks. It really does. Water. I think we should take our vitamins first. C and a D. Pretty important in the winter. I know these are supposed to taste like honey, but they taste more like 
corn syrup, which, you know, isn't bad, but there's apple extract in here. Say what? Normally not a fan of sweet, crunchy, snacky things, and I would have to say this one did not change my mind. The texture is a little bit too rough, almost too hard of a crunch, and it kind of has the potential to cut the upper palate of your mouth. Flavor payoff isn't that great, and I probably wouldn't buy this again, but it has a slight little fryer taste. So if you like that kind of Chinese donut, sweet sesame ball with glutinous rice taste, you might like it. I think this would taste good with yogurt. Yes, I am a savage. Nobody really wants to wash dishes and the pros of living alone is nobody will yell at you for double dipping into literally everything. Better. Hell yeah. The added fat of the yogurt with the creaminess of the yogurt kind of soaks into that crunchiness. Pairs really well with that honey glaze. That tartness of the yogurt binds into it. It's like if you took a potato chip and dipped it into sour cream, but a sweet version of that. How can you say no to this face? Good God. What is that smell? <laughs> It almost looks like chicharron. The texture of the fried little bubbles, the way they burst and are translucent. They smell really funky, bro. <laughs> it basically smells like 20% wet cardboard, 50% stale barbecue chips, 20% really delicious dog treats dried, and 10% <sighs> rub seasoning. I'll tell you what, they taste way better than they smell. I actually like these quite a lot. The texture is amazing. There is no false advertising here. Crunchy, but melts in your mouth is correct. It has just the right amount of crunchiness, but it doesn't cut into your gums. Gives way, melts into your saliva, gives you a nice little fiery trail as you swallow it down. Nice little heat on the top of your tongue. It's nicely peppery, but not at all aggressive. I think if this guy came to life, that's exactly what this tastes like. The main issue lies in that this is a corn-based snack, which are always superior. And this is a wheat-based snack, which means it's much, much harder in the crunch. Corn is the goat. I mean, just look at all these flavors, plus robonucleotide. Delicious. While we're at it, I also want to try this pulverone. Oh, <laughs> what? They are individually wrapped, but it smells like the strongest mothballs you've ever smelled in your entire lifetime's buy. Why? Is there a reason why these were only $2? There's quite a lot of them in here, actually. Two, four, six. So 20 cents a piece. Not bad. There are just five ingredients in here. Wheat flour, milk powder, cane sugar, young rice, and butter. Smells like powdered milk, like almost baby formula. Mm. It actually kind of just tastes like powdered milk too. Slightly sweetened, a little bit solidified in this shape, but as you can see, fairly crumbly and you can almost pinch it apart like wet I damp just, sand. I don't quite know what they put in this bag to make it smell so bad, but the pulverone itself is delicious and I highly recommend it if you've ever eaten powdered milk out of the can like I have. If you're a weirdo, it has a slight after hint of almond fragrance. Quite delicate, quite delicious. To give myself a little bit of a caffeine boost, we're gonna drink the rest of our chai from yesterday and take out the compost. I don't really know what the point of this video is, but I think at this point it's going to be a shopping haul of H Mart, taste test, what I eat in a week, and general chaos combo. Y'all ready for this? Buckle up. As such, I will be showing you everything that I eat for the next six and a half days uh, because I guess I just want to make my life hard for myself. Hmm. Guys, COVID sucks balls. I just had a one hour Zoom meeting and I feel like I'm going to throw up, but I'm also very hungry, but I also don't have energy to cook. What do I do? <sighs> um, I have leftovers in the fridge. We bought those perilla leaves. I think I'm just gonna heat up my leftovers and wash the perilla leaves and we're gonna make like little mini perilla leaf lettuce wraps. Capiche, capiche.
cool. Let's go. I'm gonna pick out some of the rougher looking leaves, tear them into small bits, throw them into my bowl with my salmon soup and my rice and peas and microwave them until they are basically cooked. I don't wanna eat those raw just in case they make my tummy go mmm. For the remaining ones, I'm going to sandwich them with dry paper towels in a plastic container and slide them back into the fridge, whatever I'm not gonna eat today. That way they stay fresher longer. I learned from a viewer that if you tip your container upside down, you can easily release any drainage via the lid later. Thank you, viewer. If you're curious what this gross slop is, I'll link my live stream up here somewhere. You're welcome. Enjoy the rants. Mom would be freaking out right now if she knew I were standing this close to my microwave. Are you one of those people who thinks microwaves give you cancer? Drop me a comment down below. If you've never had perilla leaves before, I would describe it as like a um, mint, oregano, and basil. Slight bitterness to it, the way older basil can taste. There is a slightly soapy quality to it after you swallow it. On the whole, I like it a lot. And it's supposed to be quite good for you, especially if you have like skin conditions the way that I do. One of my favorite ways to work greens into everyday diet is to have like this mushy, soupy mixture that can be warmed up, get hot, and then I throw some cold, uncooked leafy green into it and just let it wilt. That way you don't really gotta cook anything on the day of. You make a big pot of something, you throw the shit in, you get your health and your vitamins kick, and uh, you're done, and it tastes great. You're welcome. I'm gonna go ahead and fix myself a second serving, this time with a little bit of roasted onions, just so I can finish up my salmon with a little bit of extra spice on top. This onion smells really good, but I'm not gonna lie, I feel like shit right now. I think my depression has gotten really weird and unpredictable with COVID. Um, and my mood just took a sinker. So, um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. I woke myself up with listening to some SZA and we are now ready to taste our fate, mangosteen. I'm just going to remind us all that the mangosteen cost eight plus dollars. We'll see if it was a mistake. As I have absolutely no experience at all with this fruit, I don't even know what a ripe one looks like. Let's just go with one that's pretty dark purple and uh, this one, which feels, I don't know, man. It feels bad already. It's like a little bit wrinkly and actually Quite soft. All the other ones are really, really hard and not giving in. This feels wrong, but I also, let's not chop off our hands. That's it? That's all the fruit there is? <gasps> it's so tiny. Oh my gosh. Are you even ripe? Mmm. Holy sh**. <laughs> Dude, that's actually really fucking good. It's like a softer, gentler, fleshier lychee. Mmm. There's a seed. It's almost like lychee was kissed by rose water, orange blossom water, and jasmine in very, very light, undetectable amounts. This is like actually the perfect breakfast for today. And also I don't know what's going on with the seed here, but it looks like ground up pistachios. But for the most part, I don't regret this purchase at all. It may be very expensive, but it is super delicious. The flesh is unlike any other kind of flesh texture I've ever had. Think persimmon crossed with lychee. It's got that tender fibrousness that's also creamy at the same time and the flavor is so delicately floral and it just makes me feel beautiful.
It has a slightly saponic quality of tasting soapy, one might say, but not unpleasantly so. And it also tastes like you're rich enough to walk into one of those perfume shops in Williamsburg and buy yourself a $300 bottle of perfume, you know, but $8. And you get to eat this. Get every last drop, you know? That's probably like a quarter. I'm gonna head over to Aaron's place now. We're gonna get to see Fred. I'm gonna offload some of this footage so we can start getting edited. Hello. <laughs> you don't miss me, bitch? Fred, look at me. Me. Slow down, bud. I kinda miss this kitchen. I think the Chinese characters here say Liu Lian Ye Xiang No Mi Fun. So durian, coconut fragrance, sticky rice. Step one, remove tray from pack. It's tiny. Look at this. There's not even that much in here. Freddy, do you want some durian? <gasps> That's a yes. Step two, punch holes on film wrappers. You ready to smell it? Oh my God, that smells rank. Smells like compost that needs to be taken out ASAP. <laughs> Step three, put in microwave for 45 to 60 seconds. May depend on your power watt and model. What do you want, bud? You want durian? Trash cat, you would. Did you miss me, Freddy? Like at all? Oh, that plastic is hot. That cannot be good for me. You wanna smell it? Now, I think if you've ever smelled or had durian before for the first time, you'd know why Fred has that look on his face where he's like, Freddy, do you want some sticky rice? No. Too smelly. I think this was like $2.99 or $2.88 or something like that. And to be honest, for this amount of sticky rice, not great, but the meat is the durian here. This is the expensive stuff. And I've only had frozen durian in my entire life, so I'm not actually sure what the fresh stuff tastes like. One of my bucket list items is to eat durian in Southeast Asia while it's fresh. So maybe one day that'll happen. If you guys have any types of favorite durians, Drop it down in the comments below. I know there's a lot of varieties. Mm. Not bad with the sticky rice actually. Super creamy, a little bit of funk, but it actually smells worse than it tastes. The durian itself is super, super fragrant and it's absolutely sugared to hell. I feel cavities growing right now as I eat this. There are two servings in this tiny, tiny container and there's a lot of fat. So I guess durian is very high in fat or it's just that coconut milk that's giving us all that lusciousness. Overall, if you've never had durian, I would say this is worth the experience. I would try it just to see if you like it. I think having durian on its own can be really rough as a first time try. Having it in the context of coconut sweetened sticky rice is probably the best way to introduce yourself to it. Can't go around with sticky rice. You usually like sticky rice. You don't want it? It's mushy. Will I see you again, Freddy? See you soon? I love you. I have Zoom class for farm school in about an hour and a half. Let's fix up something really quick to eat so that I'm not drained of energy. Oh baby, yes! <laughs> So what I think I really wanna do is to cook our lotus root in some miso and serve it with quail eggs over these weird green seaweedy noodles and we'll maybe fluff up some of our smoked trout and just make a noodle bowl. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and wash that lotus really well. We're gonna slice it and make sure there's no yucky bits in there. Now, mom always told me that if there are any scabby areas, you can just go ahead and try to shave them down with a knife. The back of the knife is fine, or if you have a cheap knife like mom did, the blade will do the job just fine. Eventually, you'll see the blemishes start to fade away. We're gonna go ahead and oil up our skillet. Medium heat, we're going to sear that lotus until it looks like it's turning golden. 
obviously because the miso has a lot of salt in it, I'm not gonna salt it. What I will do is go ahead and slap a lid on top and just let it steam fry in there for a sec. And then we're going to dump our noodles into a bowl, put whatever we're not gonna eat into a clean jar and slide that back in the fridge so that nothing spoils. These noodles are gluten-free. They're basically made out of a plant starch and they're very low calorie. I'm not exactly sure how food like this works, but you know, smells a little fishy and mugworty if you've ever had mugwort. This is mugwort powder. It is basically an herb. It's green, it's slightly bitter, a little bit earthy, and tastes dry and sweet. Maybe we'll use mugwort in another video. So apparently COVID turned me into a horrible cook, but you know, onwards we go. Sometimes you just gotta eat your losses and Move on with life, you know? Happens all the time to the best of us. Sometimes it's a nice little crunchy accident. And sometimes it's inedible. We go on. I'm not gonna make myself feel any worse. Next, we'll squeeze some miso into our lotus that remains in the pan and stir it around, add some water, slap the lid back on, and let it steam. Well, 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 will you look at that? MSG, baby! Mmm. If you've never had miso, not. Think soy sauce, but in paste form with a little more rice essence and a lot sweeter. In a separate small pot, I'm gonna heat up our noodles. I'm going to drain them of the liquid, boil that liquid first, then slide in the noodles and let them go for about a minute and a half. Then we're going to fish them out, drain them, put in our serving bowl, and we'll cook some eggs straight in that liquid. Since it's already boiled, we might as well not waste that energy. These eggs are so tiny, I don't think they should take more than I don't know, a minute and a half, two minutes to cook max, they'll probably be hard boiled by then. Once that lotus is looking nice and tender, we can take it off the heat, let it cool down, and we'll hope that the miso is kind of glazier. This is a bowl that I bought from a thrift store in Astoria for 16 bucks, and I've used maybe twice. Time to break it out again. I'm gonna go ahead and slice up some scallions and some of our perilla leaves, just so we have a little bit of greenery. Officially the tiniest egg I've ever held in my hand besides fish. I wish my fingers were smaller. Say hello to Ben and Rob. Actually, I don't like the name Rob. Let's call him Kevin. Ben and Kevin, hi guys. I think I will use the head but maybe not today. Gruesome. Back to sleep they go. All these smells. I'm gonna put the remaining lotus off in a jar and then I'm gonna go in and boil off some water in our pan to lift all of that miso flavor to make ourselves a little tiny bit of sauce to pour over the noodles. So I'm gonna add a little drop of rice wine vinegar as well as black pepper. Meanwhile, for the rest of our soft boiled quail eggs, I'm gonna crack their shells, plop them into a jar, and I'm gonna immerse them in this beet pickling liquid that is bright magenta pink. Because these eggs are very delicate, make sure you treat them with finesse and delicacy. Otherwise, you will break their souls much like your own. But I will simply use this opportunity to do a taste test of a quail egg. The beet pickled onions, so crucial. The acidity, the crunch adds a lot to that kind of bouncy texture of the noodles, but they have a very strange texture. They almost feel like they're made out of rubber bands. Mm. Combined with the mugwort taste, it can be a little bit earthy for some folks, but because of the nostalgia factor and that my mom always force fed me these, I love them. The miso lotus is perfectly tender, nicely seasoned. I feel like I could add a little bit of soy sauce and sesame oil to the noodles to make them a little bit better, but the fish is going to provide that saltiness and umami. There's also a little bit of nice spiciness from the scallions, and I think all in all, that black pepper really cinched the deal in the sauce. Yeah, the, um, the more specific you can be, the more helpful the evaluation is. Good morning, folks. 
It is very early in the morning. We are about to go see grandma. I'm gonna heat up some of our sesame pancakes. The instructions here to say pan fry frozen sesame pancake with one teaspoon of cooking oil till both sides turn golden brown. The key to make the pancake fluffy is to use two chopsticks or cooking spatulas to push the edge of the pancakes inwards and spin several times to make a fluffy texture. In the meantime, I'm gonna swab myself just to make sure we are COVID free before visiting grandma. Tiny bit of chef's treat. We also got some pineapple for grandma, as well as a persimmon. We're good to go, baby. Oh, <laughs> 你看得见是哦你要看到我给你转过来你看啊这儿呢哦这儿呢啊看见了吗看见了哎呦你都陪着我我真高兴那就好了了 For my breakfast, we're gonna have some cacao fruit. A reminder that this experiment cost me over 11 bucks. I got it because I've never had cacao fruit before. It looks gorgeous and weird and otherworldly. And you know what? Yellow is the name of the game now. Y'all, it smells like the freshest summer pepper and cucumber. I'm gonna go ahead, wash it, and we'll try to trim it down the middle and split it apart to reveal the fruit and seeds. It's, oh my gosh. The smell is like pine nuts and hazelnuts and toasty walnuts and pecans and and towards the tip it gets like super mentholated and perfume like what is this strange fruit i am honored and beyond elated to share this first in life with y'all okay here we go oh, what oh my gosh oh, intoxicating there's so many different smells in here how is this possible? Eating this is such an experience. It's like sticky and gooey and fibrous, and it is mostly seed. And the seeds are what get turned into chocolate eventually. But we're not gonna go ahead and ferment these in a huge husk barrel thing. So we're just gonna bite it. You ready? Wow, what a strange fruit. It's smoky, it's bitter. It's like your dad's 43 year old leather jacket with his cigarette smoke and the grime of the city streets, the bus, the seats rubbing against his coat for the last 23 years, the smell of the factory, the smell of tobacco, the smell of old New York. Way back when, Ellis Island used to fuck up your family names. The smell is intoxicatingly exquisite and still a little bit perverse. It's like it shouldn't be here, and it's so proud of how downright sexy it is. It's like a musk of an irresistible person that you know is toxic. As someone who doesn't drink coffee, I think I am in trouble. I'm just gonna put it back to bed. Put it in the fridge for now. Because I have to go to Manhattan today for some errands, I'm going to pack myself some food. I have this pre-made bread that is really funky with cassava flour and buckwheat and some sourdough starter covered in millet and poppy seeds. I'm gonna slice them in half, slather some homemade almond butter on top, give them a little bit of honey or jam and uh, pack it in a container and we'll have some food throughout the day. And yeah, if you wanna know how I made this random bread, I'll link the live stream somewhere up here, maybe. 
if I figure out how to do this shit because I'm like a boomer now, you know? Just for right now though, I think I want some tomatoes, a little bit of sweet, pop, tart, vegetable, fruit, combination, whatever you have it, it sounds like it's good for me, so. I think few things beat butter and salt on bread, so for breakfast, I'm gonna add that to my plate as well. I don't know if any of you are with me on this, but I like cold butter on warm bread. I like to have my teeth sink into that slice of butter and feel it coat everything, you know? Totally okay if you don't agree. You can have bad taste, I won't judge you for it. I think I just need to have a bite of this while it's still warm because look at this gorgeous drip. Mm. I just came back from my errands. It's already 8.30 p.m. I'm way too tired to cook a full on meal, so I think we're just gonna leftover it. I'm going to stir fry up some of my cut cabbage with our cooked onions and just pair it with my mush. Mush. <sighs> Thursdays, am I right? We got a hot skillet, some oil. I'm gonna throw the cabbage in there, let them cook, fold the onions in, season it salt, MSG, pepper, whatever you want. I'm really feeling my miso vibe. I think we're gonna go in with some of this. And then I think I'm gonna crack a couple of eggs in there and just let it kind of omelet in until we have a cabbage pancake of sorts. And then mush. I don't know how it's gonna taste, but it's dinner. <laughs> To add more fat and chaos, I think we're gonna go with a dollop of ranch. Now I think we're complete. And I know I said I would eat all my meals at that table, but uh, sometimes you just gotta dig in while it's fresh and hot and scolding and sexy. The sloppiest sex. Surprisingly edible. I don't know if this is an aftermath of COVID, but I feel like my senses have really dwindled down to like half capacity, especially my capacity for tasting salt. I don't know if I put in two tablespoons of miso and I'm just not tasting it, but this is not overly salty. I worry for my blood pressure, but YOLO, I guess. I just wanna say that if you like ranch and you don't like mayo, you gotta reconcile something inside that brain of yours. They're essentially the same thing. I'm thinking protein powder and roasted almonds. And some of these, duh. God, I love roasted almonds so much. Turns out we're gonna eat the rest of this bag too tonight. But after that, I'll see you tomorrow. And we're also gonna eat a persimmon, but after this, I promise, see you tomorrow. It's very rainy and cold outside today. I'm feeling really low energy, so I think we're just gonna cook some chestnuts. I don't really know how to cook chestnuts. I've only done it maybe twice, once with my mom, and it didn't turn out great because all the little fibrous little skins underneath that outer hull stuck to the meat, and it was just really hard to eat. So we're gonna try it three different ways. We're gonna roast some, we're gonna steam some, and we're gonna boil some. I think first things first, we gotta wash it all, dry it all, and then we gotta cut a little crisscross on the rounded part. I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but mm, science. And since I'll be turning on the oven anyway, we're gonna roast some peanuts as well. Whenever I roast nuts for snacking, I like to dampen them down with a little bit of water and toss them in salt. This seasons them just barely enough. That's definitely gonna be a knife callus. Just, just, just be careful. It's hard, just use a sharp knife. Keep your fingers out of the way. Please don't lose any body parts.
So the peanuts I left in there for about 22 minutes from preheat to 350 total. They came out a little bit burnt on the edges. What I've discovered about my new oven is that it tends to overheat very unevenly, but as with all things in life, we'll work with it because what choice do we have otherwise? I'm not too worried about these roasty toasty ones because they would be really good in terms of flavor and peanut butter. So we'll find a use for them. Two tips for roasting peanuts. One, once you smell them, they're probably toasted. Every minute you go gets a little bit golden and more burnt. Two, if you wanna take the skins off, wait until they're just cool enough to handle but still quite warm hot. That way the skins slip off with the most ease. You're welcome. We are about 20 minutes into the cooking process and while they're not crunchy, I don't think they're quite done yet. So I'm gonna go for 10 minutes more. In the meantime, I guess we'll just have some peanuts. 30 minutes seems about right. I'm gonna go ahead and take a towel and cover it over and just let it cool off underneath the steam of its own residual heat for about five to 10 minutes until we can peel them without burning our fingies. 1,000% would buy these again. Oh, that's hot. Hot, but cooked. It's nice and mushy. Just as I remember, these are still a pain in the butt to peel and to eat, but this is probably a great activity to do for the holidays, you know, with family and friends that you don't have. Is it worth the work? I don't know, you decide. All I'll say is chestnuts roasted from Beijing street vendors. One of my fondest childhood memories with mom. Leave it to the pros to make it better. Let's try the steamed and the boiled. It's just not peeling well, folks. I don't know, if you have tips on how to peel chestnuts better, let me know. Is it because of the way I cut it? Did I cut it in the wrong spot? Did I make not enough deep cuts? I just, I need a chestnut cooking hotline here. A lot of work for very little payoff. Are you a masochist? If so, chestnut may be the food for oh. you. Why is that bitter? I don't think I did something right. Maybe it's just not in the cards for me to eat chestnuts. I don't think I'll be doing this again soon. Maybe you just eat it like a kiwi where you take a spoon and you just scoop it. Mm. Well, folks, we came, we saw, we did not conquer. But I would say out of the flavors, the baked and the roasted is the best. The steamed was fine and the boiled gave it a light medicinal vibe. The roasted preserved most of the traditional chestnut taste. But uh, yo, I don't know, folks. Guess I'll just stick to peanuts. There's a big part of me that's just like, you've already gone this far, you might as well keep experimenting. So I'm going to combine all of our chestnuts onto that steamer basket, put that on the baking sheet tray, and then pour our cooking liquid onto the baking sheet tray. We're gonna continue roasting at 375 until, I don't know, the liquid disappears. Maybe I undercook them. Maybe the chestnuts just suck. I guess it doesn't matter now, does it? If this doesn't work, I might cry. You know how sometimes in life you just want something too much and you know, whoever is sitting up there deciding things is just like, mm -hmm. gotcha now. Sometimes these days I'm really glad I had COVID because it's left me so enervated that I can't even be angry anymore at things. I just accept them. I don't struggle anymore. Sometimes mm -hmm. struggling is the worst part. Not bad. Would I do this again? Still no. But you know, sometimes you like pain and then those times go for it, girl. I'm right there with you. Once you've chopped off a fingertip, paper cuts don't feel like Over the next seven hours, I basically ended up eating all the chestnuts and or spitting them out. And it really made me wonder like, you know how when a relationship ends and you keep wondering whose fault was it? It's kind of like that with chestnut. I hope this is the only time this week I experienced this from a food item. I don't need any more of this in my life. Anyway, this may be a terrible idea at 8 p.m., but what could go worse, right? Cheers. I think we should cook some vegetables. What do you say to bok choy? Great. Before we get cooking though, I'm gonna eat some of these pineapples that I cut up for grandma that I'm stealing because I need some fruit and sugar, man. Remember that loving others means taking care of yourself first so you can be there for them. Mom was the one who taught me that by fucking dying. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't even wanna cook right now. I'm just doing this for the video and to get some vegetables in me. But anyway, for the bok choy, we're gonna wash it very carefully and make sure all the grit is gone. We're gonna cut away the bottoms of the stem so that the leaves fall apart a little bit so that any trapped grit will fall out into the water. 
hopefully. There is nothing worse than crunching down on grit when you really don't feel like cooking. This mush has been in my fridge for close to a week now, so I wanna get rid of it. Let's make like a little kind of porridge thing with our bok choy and our cooked onions. I'm going to start off in a hot pan with some oil. I'm gonna chop up some of the bigger bok choy leaves into bite-sized pieces, throw them in there with a little bit of garlic, a little bit of our onions. We're gonna season it with some miso, and then once they are nice and cooked, I'm going to toss in this mush. I'm going to be adding in a little bit of water to thin it out, and then, I don't know, serve? I think I wanna to top it with some of our pickled onions and beets, as well as our pickled quail eggs. I don't know how it's gonna taste, but it looks healthy. Or should I say healthful? Y'all been using that word wrong, and you don't even know it. It's fine though, we're postmodern. Mm. Well, I think I had my share of misery today with the chestnuts and God was like, this girl, we'll give her a break tonight for dinner. Thank you, God. The bok choy is tender. The surrounding brown rice and pea mixture is creamy. It's coating it like almost a thick sauce. The crunchiness of the pickled beets and the slight little tender crisp of the bok choy go together really well. And I can't wait to dig into one of these quail eggs. Look at how perfectly gel-like it is. Look at that. Are you seeing that? Y'all, that is good. Beet pickled quail eggs. Food trend of 2023, I'm calling it. And yes, I will take this bowl back to mom's desk and eat it at the table, but you know, the lighting is just better in here. You can't lie. You've seen the past couple of days. They look like shit. You wanna see the food, don't you? Bye. Oh my God, I gotta turn off the camera. Today, my friend Dan is coming over. We're gonna make some hand pulled noodles. So in preparation for that, I'm gonna clear the counters. I'm gonna try to mop up a little bit and I'm gonna make a pot of chai. I'm gonna use all whole milk along with a pinch of lavender and black tea. We're gonna go in with a little bit of pre-ground chai spice that I've made and I'll probably go in with um, sugar. You can't really brew chai without sugar. It just doesn't taste the same. I like to combine all the spices and the teas along with the sugar and I like to toast the sugar a little bit just to get it caramelized. When the sugar starts melting, you'll see it start smoking and it should start smelling slightly sweet and burnt, just like caramel. Once that starts happening, I slowly pour in the milk and wait for it to come up to a simmer. You wanna be careful not to cover this because it will boil over and you wanna keep it stirring frequently because it will start to burn on the bottom due to the whole milk content. So be here now. Dan's noodle dough has arrived. I think I wanna make three things. One, we're going to blanch the bok choy in some salted water. That way we have some vegetables to go along with our noodles. Then I wanna use some of these scallions and make a scallion oil. What? I thought we were gonna do some other thing. I thought you were trying to- I mean, I'm pretty tired. I don't have my creativity in line to go vegan Brooklyn bullshit. And then finally, I'm gonna use my spice grinder and we're gonna grind up some of those roasted peanuts from yesterday and make a peanut paste with tahini as a dressing. That way we have some options, play around a little bit. And of course we have spicy chili oil and chili flakes and I'll probably wanna toss our bok choy and a little bit of sesame oil just to give them a little Who's more nut That thing they do? Sure. Uh, he made, he, he did, he's the one who like started that. Thank you, Vic Burger. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, this is just crazy, huh? Standard operating procedure to disparage me. That's fine. I'm like, Excuse me, Jeb. <laughs> Jeb is a big fat mess. How do I open the Oh. Thank God. Mm. I'll tell you a funny story. Can I tell you a funny story? Mm -hmm. who, who, who are they? I'm probably gonna switch from Lavazza to whatever they have. I do have to apologize because filming stuff takes like triple the amount of time that I would otherwise. Take. Oh, by the way, I don't care. Cool. Smell this. Another pepper? Mm -hmm. it smells sweeter, I think. God, I have no idea what that is. Me neither. <coughs> you okay? <laughs> you wanna eat? Wanna see? <laughs> and I'm like, dude. <laughs> he had no idea. That's nice. See? For a long time, I was like, well, maybe I just need to get over this jealousy phase and not be a jealous person, and what? it's gonna take time to learn. Um, you know, so. You never get over it. I know. Trying to be objective about it. I'm like wondering if I'm wrong and if I like, if that didn't actually happen that well, way. Well, that means you're a considerate person if you even think about it. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Do you smell it? Because I don't. No, I just see it. I think COVID really got me, bro. And now I'm gonna put in some sugar. I've heard that that's a thing. You've heard that that's a thing? Yeah. Yeah. How are your carrots? Terrible. They're terrible? Yeah, they're fucking awful. Raw carrots are fucking garbage. But there's mad vitamins up in this shit. Okay. Maybe you don't have shitty ones. Maybe you only make good ones because you're a pro. I'm not very good at making the dough. You kind of want to do this. You you can do this, right? Mm -hmm. So like, alternatively, you can just use a, pin, a rolling no, pin. No, we're gonna do this. But rolling here. pins are for Nukes. bitches. You don't want to hold. You don't want to hold it too tight. You kind of want to like. So you're pulling, but you're also slapping. It's kind of like two motion. Mm -hmm. You want to just kind of go like mm -hmm. that. And that's kind of how it's done. Sexy. And I like to while I'm doing this, I'm kind of like. I'm like kind of pinching the ends yep. out so that they're not like uh, thick at the end. And I think that's good enough. You take it in the middle now, go like this, and you pick it up and you fucking pull it and you got cool. a noodle. And then? You put it in there. Sweet. And then you make another one. Whole process takes like 10 seconds. There we go. Cool. Probably a little too thick. I love sick. That's what she said. Oh my lord. <laughs> it should be around two minutes, and two minutes. or until they float. They're done. They kind of they kind of look done. They Let's have like go. a shine. They kind of have a shine to them. Oh my god! Excuse what are you me. For? Stop it. What are you waiting for? Relax. No. Give me black vinegar. Oh okay, hold on. And soy sauce. Okay, I'm not gonna use a lot of this because actually this is really thick. And I'm not sure if it's. Oh, actually... thick. I'm not actually sure if this is soy sauce. I like that. This is really like. This is not what I wanted at all. You not have regular soy sauce? Nope. <laughs> See what we're doing? Uh huh. Because we're mixing it up in the noodle sauce. Yes. Chili crisp. I just wanted to see you dress yours first so I know what to do. Mm. Needed more peanut. Some greens on the side. And then we mix it up when we eat it. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's not like too thick anyway. Now it's too, way too much. You've done it too much. <laughs> there you go. I think you got it. Oh my god. You're fing pro. How's the ends? Thick, but my wingspan isn't large there enough. There you go. This is oh, amazing. This is an amazing noodle, by the way. That's it. Be careful. Wait, wait, wait. More. Pull it more. See the ends? Okay. It is what it is. Now I'll do the next one. And I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I'm not gonna tell you what to do because you kind of, you're a natural. I would do less of that. Okay. Hold into it as shaking it so it's wider. There we go. We're slapping it. We need longer arms. Okay. You kind of want it to be like even, you know what I mean? Yeah. But well, it's perfect. You did it. You've done it perfectly. Thank you, teacher. Can I do one more? Of course. Because this is mine, right? So I'm gonna bust out this last one here. Okay. You okay. want to shape it, not like stick your fingers in it. Okay. So now I gotta. I'm gonna. Like it's wide, and like now the ends. See uh -huh. how the ends are? And now yep. when I pull it. Sweet. I don't get like uh, these fat like things that you got on your ends. <laughs> no. Okay. It's fine. It's fine? Yeah, it's fine. Wow. I'm gonna use a lot because it looks really Dude, funny. it's gonna be so salty. Don't give a fuck. I'm not sure about this, but this is the shit right here. Mm hmm You didn't even taste it yet. You don't even know if it is the shit. You made it. Yeah? I make shit sometimes. Oh, so that is shit, actually. Is that sexist? That we only have that's what she said jokes, but not that's what he said jokes? Oh yeah, this is actually smelling like fuck. <laughs> Real good. You overcook those noodles and you see it. Nope. That's how I like it. You said al dente. That's not al dente. Problem about metal bowls is they kind of end up deep. It looks glorious, honestly. They're so fat. So what's the recipe for this dough? It's a secret. Of course. Uh, three cups of flour. Mm -hmm. One and a fifth. Cup of water. One and a fifth cups of water. And a teaspoon of salt. That's it. Mm -hmm. well, if you have a dough mixer, you can mix it on low for 20 minutes. If you hate yourself, you can knead it for an hour. Then you let it sit. Knead it again, oil it, let it rest in the fridge overnight. Alcoholic figs. It's a thing. I'm gonna make it big. This is gonna be the hype jello shot. Instead of jello shots, people are gonna be eating Bailey's infused figs. I made the mistake of eating way too many of these Bailey's soaked figs. I feel like shit. As someone who doesn't drink, these basically go down a little bit like a jello shot, and I had like 12 of them, and oh, I'm way too old to be doing this, y'all. Mid 30s, it just hits you like a truck. And COVID. COVID didn't help. 
So for dinner, I definitely want to make something with that papaya back there, but I also found these cooked sweetened red beans. I think I'm going to blend this up into a protein shake and we can sip on that while we prep our papaya. For the papaya salad, I'm going to wash it, dry it, we're going to peel it, and then we're going to try to slice it as thinly as possible into shreds. The papaya is pretty fibrous, you don't want huge chunks of it unless you really like giving your jaw a workout. You definitely want to get rid of these. So one thing that's very surprising about this papaya is that it's already kind of ripening on the inside. I'm going to go ahead, slice it, and give it a taste. This is kind of stuck in that spot where it's not quite sweet, but it's not quite crunch. And I also don't know what chemical properties about the papaya is triggering my eczema so bad right now. My hand is very irritated. So if you know, drop a comment down below. Teach me something, won't ya? Thanks. Since only the outside is fibrous and the inside is already pretty soft, I think instead of shredding it, we're just gonna go ahead and cube it because why spend that time? Normally there would be some lime juice in here, but I don't have any lime, so we're just gonna go in with some vinegar. We're gonna go in with a little bit of sugar, some grated garlic with some of this non prick, a little bit of fish sauce, a little bit of our tomatoes, have, and we'll just season it to taste. Our fish sauce and MSG is always the answer. I love my life. My friend Giannis is coming over for lunch, so I'm gonna get ready to make those noodles from yesterday for him. In the meantime, I'm gonna be making a protein shake with this really weird defrosted milk that I've had in my freezer since moving here about a month and a half ago. It looks weird. Look sketch. Note to self that if you freeze milk and defrost it, it will separate into whey and solids. Um, smells fine. <laughs> I think if I wanted to take the effort to immersion blend this, it'll probably homogenize again, but who's got time and energy for that? It's Sunday, y'all. Even Jesus is resting. Tastes fine. Mm. We're also gonna make some tea because it's soothing. Soothing Sundays. How do people stay so energetic in their 30s? It's exhausting. Uh, great peas. Brown peas. What are brown peas? Like green peas, but brown, and they're okay. drier, and they're usually uh, boiled. Um, and I might invite you over or something. Ooh. Are you doing anything for Christmas? No, I'm trying not to. I went to H Mart and I planned on spending a hundred because I got this coupon that was like 10 off of a hundred and I ended up spending a hundred and fifty dollars. My grocery store is just really expensive. So every time I go, it's like seventy dollars and I bought like five things, right? Damn, so girl. After I gave Giannis the half serving of noodles, we were still hungry, so we started to cook off these sorghum noodles, which is supposedly gluten-free, but they looked like normal noodles, surprisingly. Oh, no, 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 you're supposed to be showering noodles with iced water. Mm. Are they cooked? Oh no, these are not cooked. They're very hard. Like land yarn hard. Yeah, it tastes like pasta. Is it cheaper than pasta? No. Can you Google if sorghum has gluten? Have you ever had a good gluten free noodle? Uh, no. I mean, a similar packaging of soba noodles at like a Japanese market would be very expensive, probably like $10. Really? Wait, where's yours? That one on the floor. And by the way, these sorghum noodles are really amazing. They're supposed to be 100% sorghum, which is gluten-free, but they don't really taste gluten-free. I don't know how they've made them. If they truly are gluten-free, I am amazed. They're springy, they're bouncy, they look like soba noodles, but they have like this very rice noodle springiness to them. It's delicious. Almond paste-like thing in the middle. Marzipan? Almost, but I, I don't know if it's marzipan. It's like too white to be marzipan. Maybe it is marzipan. I don't know. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, I think it is marzipan. It probably is marzipan. They're so sweet. The mm. name is Vatrasputins, which is... Wait, say that again? Vatrasputins. There you go. Uh, literally storm bird, probably some sort of a kind of bird. I don't know what the translation is. They look hot. These are kind of similar in that they don't have chocolate. They're sort of just like... Candy? Brown, like... Cavity? Crumbly, crumbly stuff. Crumbly. This one has some nuts. Nuts, okay. These ones I'm not familiar with. Wait, where are know. these all from? Latvian. Oh. Okay, this has a cat on it. Can we split this one? Sure. <laughs> Moscow? A mask. Mm. Whoa, this looks fun. It's like the Three Musketeers. Not familiar. But like fudgier. Not familiar. <laughs> Look at the wrapping paper though. I love it. I kind of want to wash it and put it on my fridge. Maybe I will. I have to go to my friend Mel's place for dinner tonight and I'm thinking I'm gonna bring like this really weird, inauthentic, crazy mako tofu. I just, I live for the chaos, you know? This starchy cooking water, by the way, is gonna be perfect for a mapo tofu. To make this a totally vegetarian experience, I'm going to be soaking some of these dried shiitake mushrooms in boiling liquid, chopping them up, and combining them with these textured vegetable protein nuggets in place of meat. We're gonna toss them in a little bit of sesame oil, some soy sauce, white pepper, black pepper, and sugar. Skillet hot oil, we're gonna pour in our marinated soy mixture and mushroom mixture, and we're gonna cook them until they're nice and golden with some bits a little bit crispy. As always, very important to give it a taste before proceeding. And then in our skillet, we're gonna go in with a neutral oil. We're going to toast some of our chili paste. Preferably don't bend down, but I don't have any. I'm gonna use some of mom's fermented black beans. We're gonna do a lot of garlic, a lot of ginger, and a lot of scallions, followed by some sugar and our tofu. Now, because silken is very hard to cut and handle, I'm just gonna scoop it out with a large spoon in as big of a piece as I can because they will get disturbed and broken up during the cooking process. I'm going to use our noodle cooking water, combine it with some cornstarch for thickening power, mixed in with soy sauce, sesame oil, black vinegar, and we're going to pour it in there Stir it very gently until it's nice and thickened. Then we're gonna top it with some MSG. Can't forget our star ingredient. As the tofu gets cooked, we're gonna add our meat mixture back on top. We're gonna take it off the heat, sprinkle on a little bit of extra scallion, maybe some extra chili oil if you'd like. You know, world's your oyster. I will just say that making any kind of Sichuan stir fry is really hard on your kitchen space and your camera lens if you're filming yourself because oil will go everywhere. So you've been warned. Time to pack the chit up and hit the road. But oh my God, what kind of monster would I be if I didn't do a taste test, right? It's definitely a little too sweet to be considered authentic, but that is satisfying, bro. I'm gonna do dishes, change, run, and I'll see you when I come back. Just having a midnight snack and then we're gonna go to bed. Okay. Y'all, I woke up and I'm so tired today. I think we're gonna have to take it easy even though it's like the day that I wanted to get the most cooking done, but life be life and we just gotta roll with it. One thing that I definitely can't ignore are these phallic eggplants. They are starting to go really soft and wrinkly and you know, just like not ideal. So we should cook them. I'd like to wash them, dry them, split them in half. And then I'm gonna put them into a 400 degree oven. We're going to brush them with oil and a little bit of miso and our little Thai shrimp chili paste. Usually with eggplants that are not cut into cubes or slices, I like to go ahead and score them a little bit just so that all of your seasoning and oils can sink in and help it roast faster. You're so welcome for the ASMR. The number one sin of cooking eggplants is not using enough oil, so do not skimp on the oil. And since the oven will be on, I'm also gonna be washing this yam and I'll split it in half and we'll roast it face side down as well with a little bit of oil. 
The outside of this yam looks extremely like a taro root, which I always peel before cooking. So I think I'm gonna do the same to this. We're gonna peel it first and then we're gonna have it and then we'll roast it. Be very careful when you're peeling it. It's very slippery and slimy. So this is what the inside of a yam looks like. On an oiled skillet, I'm gonna go ahead and lay out the slices, pour more oil on top and then salt them. Into the oven we go. I'm gonna make it my mission today to eat up some more of those uh, konyaku noodles and because they're fresh and already open, I'm just a little worried that they're gonna spoil. To keep it simple, I'm just gonna drain them, pop them into a bowl and microwave them, you know, cause like, tired, low energy, low effort. We're still gonna eat, it's fine. Because our cilantro isn't doing too well, I'm gonna go ahead and chop it all up, stems and leaves, just so that we're ready to use it and sprinkle it onto everything. You know, once it's prepped, it's just that much easier to eat. Kitchen shears? Never heard of her. Y'all, compost is beautiful. Look at this art. Oh my gosh, with some extra onions and these eggs, this is quite a good meal, y'all. I do want a little bit of spicy though, so maybe some chili oil. It's a good song, it's a good bowl, it's a good feel. These eggs are so damn good. The eggplants are a little too salty to eat on their own, but because they're so creamy and crispy on the outside, once you mix it into the noodles, the crispiness stays as little texture bites, and then the creaminess fades into a sauce that coats the noodles. And honestly, who needs seasoning when you have properly roasted eggplants? <laughs> The roasted yams basically shallow fried in oil and they are delicious. They get crispy on the outside, they get nice and dense, but still mushy and creamy on the inside. My favorite kind of texture, honestly. They're just so snackable. They get nice and golden and beautiful and they just taste like unsweetened potato. Sweet potato? Sweet potato and potato had a baby. Take out the sugar, bam. It's almost like a denser parsnip. It's so bland in flavor. In fact, that's its main draw. I love it. Blank canvas all your needs. You can call it the tofu of tubers. Potato tip who? It's yam time, baby. Ranch is good, y'all. Ranch is good. God, I love double dipping. Dessert. You just know seasonal depression is slamming you when you end up eating a whole jar of peanuts in the span of three hours. Okay, fine, it was one hour. Jesus. Can I just tell you the anxiety that I felt all of a sudden when I realized that today is actually the seventh day and therefore the end of our week? But I still haven't used most of the ingredients that I bought or, you know, at least half of them. So that got me thinking, why do we follow this week-long food diary format if it doesn't work for us? Why not just break this arbitrary construct of time and do something with all the ingredients that I bought? I think that's fair. I mean, it's not a democracy, so I do whatever I want. As far as tonight is concerned, I'm gonna take it easy on myself. I'm gonna eat some leftovers. We got the papaya salad. I don't want that going bad. And we have some leftover mapo tofu, so I'm gonna finish that up too. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, I'm so sleepy, but I promised grandma I would cook her sweet potatoes, so that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> we're gonna turn the oven on to 375. We're going to cut up our sweet potatoes in half, and then we're gonna poke some holes, put them face down with a little bit of oil so they don't burn, and roast them until they're nice and creamy. I guess now I'll go wash my face and brush my teeth. I think what I'm gonna do next is to peel a sweet potato and a yucca, and we're going to lay out a tray, oiled with salt, seasoning if we'd like, the fries for the oven because we've turned it on, and now I should put something else in there because it's like a compulsion or something, I don't know. I don't 
don't know if I chose right. It looks weird. Maybe these are spots that are actually going bad. Like mm. This also reminds me of Taro because of these purple undertones. We're gonna get rid of all of this because I don't know, I think we're supposed to just go for white. I guess I'm racist when it comes to root vegetables. The knife is sliding in with no resistance whatsoever, so we are ready to pack and go. To get the fries to golden on both sides, we're gonna take it out halfway and flip so that, you know, crunchy maximalization. I just got back from the doctor's office. That took way longer than I expected. Our fries are now completely cold, but I'm gonna eat them with ranch, so who cares? I also have just about an hour and a half before I have to run out to get my tattoo, so I'm gonna eat my fries and decide which tattoo I'm gonna get emblazoned on my body. And I think that's a leaf blower outside even though there are no leaves because it's the dead of winter, so. I don't know, none of our world makes sense. We're used to it by now, right? Yes, they probably would have tasted much better while hot, but the sweet potato ones are like fully caramelized. They kind of stick to your teeth like taffy when you chew them, which is utterly delicious when encased by that extra crispy exterior. The yuca has a lot less moisture, so it's a little bit dried out on the inside. It still has a magnificent crunch on the outside, but it can be a little tough to chew. You're very done. I do have it, but nothing a little ranch can help. The year is 2022, the lawnmower is really loud and annoying, but if you haven't dipped your fries in chili oil yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, babe. I think the next time we buy yuca, we should make chips instead of fries. Update, so after eating almost the entire tray of our yuca and sweet potatoes, I looked up how to cook cassava, AKA yuca, and apparently you're supposed to boil it before you fry it or roast it because it contains toxins, so, um, if I don't ever finish this video, you know now to boil your cassava before uh, roasting it and eating it. Cool. So do we think eating uh, more drugs is good? There's toxins on top of toxins, YOLO. Although I do think if I'm gonna die, I should eat more of these Latvian treats before I kiss this world goodbye, you know, cause I can't have food regrets. Delicious. This is almost like a hazelnut crunch bar. Got a little bit of that Ferrero Rocher vibe going on. Oh, this one looks good. I like the other one better. This one kind of just tastes like cocoa powder, cocoa butter, and grainy sugar. But the other one, nutty vibes. A little bit softer on the chocolate. I've decided I also want to eat some blueberries because even if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna go out a healthy girl. Which I guess doesn't make sense because if you're dying, you're definitely not healthy, right? Maybe the toxins are already kicking in. If you had to choose between losing either your body or your mind first, which one would you choose? Think about it. Hello, I am tatted, I am tired but I am also hungry, so we're gonna cook. It's now been a full week since we bought this bitter melon and it's starting to look a little um, rough. So let's cook it. I wanna do some scrambled eggs with this. And in the meantime, I really wanna try out those corn noodles. I'm thinking a very simple garlic, onion, tomato thing. Words, not my, not my forte right now. I only have enough energy to clean one pan today, so I'm gonna make our bitter melon and eggs first in a pan, and then once that's done, we'll do our tomato noodle thing. For the bitter melon, I'm gonna wash it, dry it, slice it up, cut off the ends, and just go down the middle, take out any seeds that are inside, and then chop it into bite-sized pieces. I'm gonna also prep up a couple of chopped garlic, and we're gonna oil our skillet over medium heat. Once that's going, we're gonna add the garlic, we're gonna add the bitter melon, we're gonna add some salt. Actually, instead of salt, let's use our miso. I'm just in love with it this week. We'll stir that around, and once that bitter melon is looking a little bit wilted, a little bit tender, and a little bit more vibrantly green, we're gonna crack in two or three eggs, depending on how hungry I feel, and then we'll go ahead and crack in some black pepper, white pepper, and a little spoonful of sugar. 
If your eggs ever stick to the bottom of the skillet like this, chances are you didn't use enough oil, but that's okay. Just turn off the heat, let all the moisture contents cover that burnt bit, and let it sit for about three minutes, and then you can scrape everything off, including the nice brown fondy delicious. The sugar will offset the bitterness a little bit, bring out the natural sweetness in both the bitter melon and the eggs. We'll put that in a bowl and we'll go back into the pan with a little extra oil, some sliced tomatoes, some sliced garlic, and our cooked onions. We're gonna let that cook, stirring frequently until that tomato breaks down into a jammy, jammy texture. Once that happens, I'm going to place our noodles. I think I'm gonna just crack them in half so that they fit in the pan better, and then I'm gonna add some liquid by eye. Honestly, it looks just like spaghetti or linguine, whatever you call this cut. Again, this claims to be 100% corn flour with only water added as a second ingredient. So, gluten-free? We'll see. Just keeping in mind here that both my cooked onions and this broth have salt already. We're not gonna add in any salt until the noodles are cooked and we give it a taste. Bitter melon would also be salted, so you know, sodium intake is probably already up there. Personally, I love one pan noodle dishes because you get all the carby, starchy goodness from the noodles, not washed away at all, all in the sauce. Especially if you're eating vegetarian or vegan, this helps you create a creamy consistency in the final product without using any animal products. If you want a looser sauce, you can go ahead and just pour in a lot of water and wait for it to boil off. Or if you want a more measured, creamier cling to your noodle sauce, go in like risotto, a little bit of stock or water at a time and just give it some time to absorb before you put in the next batch of moisture. If at any point you feel like you've added way too much liquid and you can't really pour it off or skim it off, then you can go ahead and blast the heat and drive off that moisture faster. Chinese-ish? Definitely trash. No-ish, just trash. <laughs> Silky noodles. Are they al dente? Very al dente. Maybe too al dente? I'm gonna have to cook them a little bit more. This is a lesson to us all to taste your noodles before plating. <laughs> Listen, I get it. Some nights you're just too hungry and uh, you can't wait for the food to be done, but maybe those nights you should just not cook. You don't have to be dumb like me. This is what I make videos for, to show you what not to do in life. Imagine if you could just live life while having someone else make all the mistakes for you and you never have to be wrong. That's why they pay me the big bucks. I will take this time to let you know that the bitter melon is absolutely delicious, especially when you have some tomatoes in the mix. The sweetness and the tartness of the tomato lift that bitter astringency of the bitter melon. And um, what can I say, mom? You're right, it's not that bad. I actually like it. I guess I'm a changed woman now. Bitter melon is definitely a acquired taste, but once you do acquire that taste, they can almost taste a little bit fragrant, a little bit floral, mystique, intrigue, sexy, what might say. It's kind of like when you have that one person that you're crushing on and you crush on them because they're so hidden. There are just some things that you know they're not telling you and that's part of it. That's part of the attraction. That's bitter melon. But you know, you need eggs, you need tomato, you need sugar, you need salt, you need oil. Just like how your crush isn't just attractive because they're mysterious, they have all the other qualities going for them too, you know? Just so hot in so many different ways, but you need to season it. All right, here we go. Take two, luscious as ever. And this time, actually cooked and so delicious, holy crap. After tasting these noodles, I'm willing to believe that there is only corn in here. It might not be corn flour, but rather corn starch because it definitely tastes a little bit like Korean starch noodles. It's got that almost toothsome quality to it where you can't really overcook it. And it tastes a little bit rubbery, but not in an unpleasant way, just elastic, gentle elasticity. 
It has absorbed that tomato, onion, garlic flavor so well, and I'm really happy with this bowl, y'all. It's got green, it's got yellow, it's got red, it's got happiness. And all I'm gonna say is, if you're gluten-free and you've been trying those bean pastas, you owe it to yourself to try some of these sorghum and corn flour noodles. Hit up your H Mart, track these down, try them out. You're welcome. I'm gonna have my depression peanuts, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good night. Hello, and welcome to day eight. Today, we're gonna go see grandma, and then I'm gonna walk to Brooklyn to meet up with my friend Yuli from farm school, and we're gonna eat some goodies for breakfast at Sun. But before then, I should probably put on pants. The year is 2022. Do we consider leggings pants yet? One of the greatest debates of my lifetime. It's like a laminated, so there's layers to it. I went through a pineapple bun phase where that's all I ate whenever I went into a Chinese bakery for like really? two years. I think next time one of you should tell me to not walk back from Brooklyn after getting a tattoo. Mm. The pastries that I had for brunch were absolutely amazing, but I am hungry, so it is time for us to cook. I definitely want to cook some fish balls and those really green noodles, but I'm gonna boil off these cassava fries and mash them and eat them first. So obviously I didn't die yet from eating them unboiled, but I figured they're pretty rock hard and not very palatable, so let's try it mashed. The way they were supposed to be eaten in the first place. Remember to dump out your cooking liquid to get rid of the cyanide, unless of course you like cyanide. Who am I to tell you how to live your life? You've seen me. We meet again, friends and foes. Hmm, think it needs a little bit of chili crisp. And ranch. Ranch and chili crisp. I mean, what a great American love story, y'all. It worked. Ranch and chili crisp together. Holy matrimony. Will they stay together? Stay tuned to find out. I really think we're onto something, y'all. Could this be the next mayo chup? Hashtag make it trend. Since I'm really hungry, I'm gonna keep this dinner super simple. Sometimes, very rarely, I realize the value of not making life harder than it has to be. Although sometimes that means that I don't Google shit and then I just roast cassava when I actually should be boiling it and then roasting it and then, you know, possibly give myself cyanide poisoning, but that's besides the point. I'm alive for now. We're gonna boil off some fish balls. We're gonna cut them in half. I'm gonna make a miso sauce with our cooked onions and toss the warm noodles in with everything, add a little bit of cilantro, maybe some of our perilla leaves, and let that be that. To make our miso sauce a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna grate some fresh ginger in there, followed by miso, cooked onions, and a splash of white vinegar. A ground black pepper will always do nicely, plus a little bit of spice. Then we're just gonna stream in water tablespoon by tablespoon until we reach our ideal sauce consistency. That looks pretty good to me. In terms of our noodle preparation operation, we're going to go ahead and boil a pot of water. We're going to go ahead and blanch those noodles until they're nice and hot. We're gonna drain them and put them directly into our bowl with the sauce. We're gonna mix in our leaves so that they kind of have a chance to wilt and get cooked. To the same pot of water, we're gonna put in our fish balls and cook until they are tender and bouncy and whatever it is. According to the package, whatever it says. Apparently five minutes. I love cooking fish balls because if you just let them keep boiling, they get bigger and bigger and bigger until they look like puffy little clouds. 
Most of what's in here is just starch. It's not actually fish, so kind of like pasta. It'll just keep absorbing the moisture that it's surrounded in. Kind of like us too. Mm, I'm so hungry. People are laughing outside. I guess it's like holidays. You know what? Food is my holidays. These noodles are a handful, bro. They take a lot of wrangling. We're gonna stab a fish ball, get some noodles, get some cilantro, get some onions, get some sauce. Interesting. Immediately, you can taste the perilla leaves. That kind of astringent, slightly licorice taste comes through with the vinegar too. The miso is umami, melts in really well with the fish balls, the noodles, a little bit sea-like marine vibes. And I think all in all, it's pretty good. The caramelized onions provides a little bit of sweetness, which makes this all like a weird Adam's family. I'm just starving. I'm gonna go eat. You're gonna think I'm whack, but ranch noodles? Yes, why the fuck not? Oh my gosh. What a glorious, glorious marriage. I approve. All I'm gonna say is, don't knock it till you try it. I'm gonna eat my depression peanuts and I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, y'all. I don't remember what day it is, but my friend Samira is coming over and I'm so excited to be cooking lunch for both of us because we have that eel in the freezer. And I think I'm gonna soak some brown rice so we can make brown rice with eel and maybe some sort of dessert with our bananas. This package of eel was about 12 bucks, so six per eel, which is, you know, not cheap, but also less expensive than buying a eel rice bowl outside. Am I saying eel correctly? I feel like it's the same thing with yeast. Was that right? For the brown rice, we're going to steam it with the chopped rehydrated shiitake mushrooms that we have left over. Just to flavor that rice a little bit more. I think I'm also going to grate a little bit of fresh ginger straight into our rice to, you know, give it some warmth. I think we're gonna need to put some of this in there too. Salty, jammy onions just make everything better. I'm gonna slice up some scallions for garnish and that's pretty much it, right? I'm not measuring the water. Good luck to us. The package for the eel gives several instructions. We can either bake it in the oven, do it in the microwave, or boil it. I think to keep it simple, I'm going to make our rice in our skillet. And once that rice is cooked, I'm going to lay this defrosted fish on top, slap the lid on, and just let it keep steaming until it's all nice and warm. That way, we don't lose any of the sauce and the seasoning that's already on the eel. It just soaks into the rice itself. Right before the fish goes onto the rice, I'm going to drizzle a little bit of oil around the edges of that skillet so that it seeps underneath the rice and hopefully crisps it up as we heat up the fish. That way, we can have a little bit of controlled, delicious burn. To brainstorm our dessert, I'm gonna need to eat some of our cocoa first. Now, I know that this fruit won't last forever and we've had it open for about a week now, so I think we should probably cook it. Candy it. To candy anything, you put it in a pot, you add about equal amounts of water and sugar, and you let it boil until your desired results. Usually, that means the syrup cooks down to a nice, thick, viscous state. I have no idea how much caffeine is in this fruit rind, but it's pretty delicious, guys. It's like a fruit roll-up, but adult. Next stop, banana cassava cake. I'm gonna wing it with no recipe and just going by look and feel, but I will weigh everything so that we can have a record of what exactly went in to the final product. But first, a taste test. Ooh. This is a burrow banana, not your run-of-the-mill Cavendish variety. Even though it looks quite ripe and it is very blackened, it's still got that green banana taste to it. It is sweet, but it is also very bright, like an apple. And the texture, I love it. We're gonna take two of our blackest looking ones. We're gonna peel them, we're gonna put them in a bowl, and we're gonna mash them. About a quarter cup of olive oil, 60 grams. About a half cup of sugar, 100 grams. A pinch of salt, a little whisk a little taste. Teaspoon and a half of baking powder, plus quarter teaspoon baking soda. Half a teaspoon of chai spice. And some of this Koch brand coconut. Two tablespoons. And of course, it's almost two years expired. Another whisk. I'm gonna go in with two tablespoons of yogurt to offset that baking soda, plus a large egg. We're gonna preheat our oven to 350 degrees. We're going to grease our skillet. Always grease with butter when you have the option. 
and then we're gonna go in with cassava flour until that texture looks passable. This is 165 grams of cassava flour, and it looks about right to me. Why not? I'm going to place half the batter in the skillet and I'm going to color the other half with some cocoa powder. And because we're adding dries in the form of cocoa powder, I'm gonna add a little bit of milk to dilute it and a splash of almond extract, because why not? Never forget to taste your work. This smells amazing. And whenever I have the chance to do a gluten-free baked good, I take it. Usually when you see a syrup start to bubble vigorously, that means that it's starting to turn into candy. So you might just want to turn it off, cool it off, and see if it solidifies into a nice viscous syrup. And if it doesn't, you can always put it back on the heat to continue cooking. It was delicious, properly salted, everything well seasoned, the rice was moist, the eel was creamy and luscious, and Samira brought me back so many treats <laughs> from her travels from the Netherlands. Things. Okay, I, I tried the orange one that feels like cheddar. Is it cheddar? I don't know. You just make up flavors like a hugo. Delicious though. It's like if you crossed a Pringle with a cheese it with a peanut in the middle. It tastes like a cheese it the outside oh, cracker. Oh yeah, you're right. Is there a difference in flavor between the... Yeah, the brown one tastes the most different from the other ones, I think. And then the red one has the thinnest coating. The red one is like barely coated. I like the brown one. I think I like... the white one. I don't know. I think I like the orange cheddar one. It's got the thickest coating. Mm. So it's the most cracker-like. I wonder if you have Dutch viewers. Do we have Dutch viewers? <laughs> <laughs> this is Christmas for me, Samira. Thank you Very for Christmas. Nice Christmas. Thank you. They really have peanut butter and stuff? I hope so. <laughs> Like combos. Yeah, but with peanut butter. It's real sexy, you know? <laughs> sexy content for the people. <laughs> I taste it. No. The you peanut butter. You can't taste the peanut butter, but it's a cheese. It's suggestive. It makes the pretzel taste smokier. Yeah. The pretzel tastes more mature. It tastes like I could have this with my coffee. Constant. It smells like MSG. Obviously superior. Oh no. <laughs> tastes like MSG and soy sauce. Yeah. <laughs> But like, I was prepared for like bitter, bitter. Yeah, so now it's good. <laughs> because this cake is so dry, you can put some of this cacao syrup on top. Like a glaze. Probably should have gone on when it was still. Like, oh, what's your favorite pizza in New York? Dude's pizza! <laughs> okay, so the tiles are really cool. Yeah. This is very, very cool. Yeah, the they're tile. kind of misaligned, but. Ice cream maker that a viewer gifted me. I'm thinking if we make froyo, it's gonna be yogurt and persimmon that are really bright. And I just add some sugar and spin it and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's try that. <laughs> so when I just switch the camera from the right side to the left side, yeah. that is Offending the 180 rule yeah. because I'm switching the perspective that you're watching the story from Which is something that you're supposed to never do in filmmaking How long has the thing frozen for? It's not working Yeah, it's not really frozen is I it? think I'll just go ahead and freeze the bowl Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah With ice cream in it Yeah Do we think a yogurt will make this moist? Moist cake? No, I finished those. Oh, I still have some. Thank you for holding on to these for me. Uh, of course. White Rabbit. 
popsicle stick. I think it's because God was like, you have made Samira wait so long <laughs> to eat this popsicle with you that I'm gonna make sure your ice cream maker does not work. Oh, it's like sticky. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. It was so chewy? Yeah. They captured it, right? Or they captured something. They captured like part of the chewiness of a white rabbit. All they need to do is put the rice paper on the yeah. outside. Wow. Tease marks. <laughs> this is kind of amazing. Yeah. Holy shit. It tastes exactly like the candy. Chan Di, Shanghai Shi. Oh, I see it. Shanghai. Chan Ming Chang, Da Bai Tu, Xue Gao. You know, my favorite part is going to be the wooden stick. I have a fascination <laughs> with wooden stick and frozen treats. Mm. Tease marks. Can I show you my favorite thing to do with popsicles? Yes. I like to use it as lip balm. All right, that worked when we had like the red popsicles and you had. But clear gloss is back. Oh my god. In vogue. <laughs> this might be one of the best popsicle sticks I've ever tasted. This is the prize here. It tastes like cream and nature, but like junk food nature. Wow. What an experience you've gifted me. <laughs> it's so pliable too. I've never had such a pliable stick. It's not cracking. It's taking on so much abuse. This is my role model for 2023. A stick. And she smells good too. So if you see this in your grocery stores, do give it a try. It tastes even better than I remember the candy being. So before I head off for the night, we're gonna have our depression peanuts because traditions be traditioning. And then I'll see you tomorrow. We'll cook more stuff. Guys, some of that froyo froze. And it tastes delicious. And I'm really glad we tried it. I am delighted. Good night. Not gonna lie, today was kind of weird. I went to see grandma and then basically ate a lot of leftovers plus all the snacks that Samira brought back and just edited some footage but felt really lackluster because I got five hours of sleep. My own fault, but also not my own fault because it's never just you. And that being said, I think I just want to eat some chocolate and yogurt and easy stuff that I don't have to cook, but I do still have some leftovers in the freezer that will go perfectly with our natto. Y'all don't even know how excited I am to try this natto. I'm gonna go ahead and thaw everything, take a shower in the meantime. We're gonna snack on some foods like cake and froyo and uh, do a nightcap. But this exciting, disgusting thing that everybody abhors, but actually, if you give it a chance, you might love it. <laughs> Isn't that the way it usually goes? In I'm also tired because I'm on my period, but you didn't need to know that except in the context of- I'm gonna eat some chocolate now because you know what? Chocolate is one of the greatest things to have when you're bleeding. I don't know why. Science? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotta love some saliva, spider way. It comes with seasoning packets. This one is some sort of oil mixture and this one is mustard. Very nice counterbalance to the rather earthy terracotta bitter vibes of not. It is quite gross in terms of how it looks. It just... <sighs> You've seen the Eminem music video for Slim Shady, you know, where, you know, just um... <sighs> Listen, we're gonna eat this. It's good for you. And it's an acquired taste, just like olives and anchovies. And once you get over this, you're gonna love it. You're gonna be like, this is the best thing to have happened to my life. How did I live so long without it? My life will never be the same again. There has to be an easier way of eating this, man. If you've ever had kinako, really does taste like toasty soybeans, but soft and slightly mucusy. Um, that mustard is so essential to adding a little bit of vinegariness and spice. You just need it to not taste so earthy, but it also increases the mucus factor. Okay, the condiment makes it. The condiment makes it. It has like the consistency of soapy aloe vera. Does that make sense? I'm gonna heat up my frozen mush, my onions. We're gonna put the natto on top. We're gonna have a delightful dinner and we're gonna eat some froyo and I'm gonna drink my tea and my ovaries are gonna settle the fuck down. I don't even know why I have them. I don't even want babies. Does anyone want to buy ovaries off of me? Is that how it works? Can I make a profit somehow off of these things that I've had to suffer endlessly for? God, sometimes life gives you lemons and all you can do is compost them. 
And if you're feeling lazy, it just goes straight in the trash. F lemons. We're also gonna go ahead and eat these pickled eggs because at this point, they're probably rubber balls. The longer you pickle eggs, the bouncier they get. Not exactly ideal, but you know, how many times has life been ideal for you? We still have some perilla leaves and we can go ahead and chop these up and eat them too because health, it's important sometimes. Oh, that's an interesting vibe. The sweet, salty, caramelized onions balances out that bitterness from the soybeans matched by the herbal goodness of the perilla leaves and then a little bit of acidity from our eggs topped with that yolky creaminess that has solidified into a gel. All in all, textures are there, flavors are there. It's all very exciting. It feels rich, but it also feels very healthful, very balanced. I honestly think it's beautiful, you know? Pink, green, yellow, like spring. Even if it looks gross, you gotta give it a chance. You just don't know what it's gonna add to your life until after you accept it into your being. And don't just try it once. Try it a couple of times. Because people are capable of change. But sometimes they just need to be given some time. So have patience with yourselves. Sometimes though, you might just need a little bit of extra chili oil. If you don't like mush, get out of my channel. It's froyo time. It is frozen rock. Hard. This is what happens when you try to make froyo without an ice cream maker. You just have to settle for shaved yo. <laughs> Icy, shardy, but still sweet and creamy. It's kind of like Yakult, if you've ever had Yakult. I'm tired. I'll see you tomorrow. Y'all, I think today is the last day of this stupidly long video. I'm going to bring some chestnuts to grandma, and when I come back, we can get cooking. Let's cook. The two main things we still haven't used are our tteokbokki, rice cakes, and our fish cakes. So I think we're just gonna make some tteokbokki. I have some of these dried anchovies, we have gochujang, we have everything we need to start from scratch. First, we're gonna make an anchovy mushroom kelp broth. So basically, we're going to toast our little dried anchovies until they're fragrant. We're gonna add in some water, we're gonna rinse our mushrooms and put those in. And we're gonna bring that water up to a simmer until the mushrooms are hydrated. Then we're gonna turn that heat off and we're going to let soak our kelp so that all the flavor dissolves into that soup without it extracting the bitter notes. After 10 minutes, the kelp is soft. We're gonna take all the solids out of that. We're gonna reserve it for another use. And then we have our broth. We're gonna take our rice cakes. We're gonna give them a rinse because you know, who knows where they've been. We have some gochujang, we have some garlic, we have a little bit of soy sauce and vinegar and honey and our broth. I'm gonna take a large pot, place it over medium heat. We're gonna drop in some oil. We're gonna give that chili flake, gochujang, garlic, soy sauce, vinegar, honey mixture a quick fry. We're gonna stir constantly so that nothing burns. This is gonna go for about a minute and then we're going to add in about two cups of broth and bring that to a boil. We're going to add in our rice cakes and we're gonna keep adding in liquid as we need. To get the rice cakes nice and soft, it might take about seven to 10 minutes depending on what kind you're using. And we're gonna just keep adding in more broth if we wanna thin it out and keep cooking those rice cakes until they are the perfect texture for you. After that, we're gonna take our fish cakes, we're gonna slice them up into little triangles and we're gonna drop them into that pot. Now normally there's some scallions going in at this point. I ran out of scallions, but I'm gonna use our caramelized onions instead for a little bit of allium punch. Personally, I really love these little anchovies, so I'm going to put some of these into our tteokbokki. Take it off the heat, stir in some sesame oil for flavor, and top it with sesame seeds if you'd like. I'm also going to chop up the remaining perilla leaves just for a little bit of green and health. At the time of filming this, today is actually Christmas Eve. And normally I would be eating hot pot with mom to celebrate the holidays, but I'm with her in a lot of ways. And one of the small ways is using her cooking utensils. This she used to cook countless meals for me. And as you can see, it's worn down quite a lot over the years. And I like to think that all of the flavors and time and memory is with me. And that I'm tasting, I'm tasting moments from my life with mom every time I use this. So here's to you, mom, and all the delicious food you've provided me over the years.
thank you. I love you. I miss you. And I hope you're somewhere having fun. Hi, June. Hi, Aaron. This looks great. Thanks for visiting. Of course. Tell us what Thanks. you're doing here today. I'm helping you uh, put together and test a, a TV monitor thing so you can make videos by yourself <laughs> without using my computer all the time. <laughs> What do you think? That's dokboki, right? Dokboki. Mm-hmm. And some fish cake? Yes. Always fish cake. I love fish mm. cake. It was great. It's yeah. an excellent fish cake dokboki perilla. Do you need more chili oil? Um, it's good the way it is. Also, you spiced it well already. I sure did. It's pretty well spiced. Good. Thank you for enjoying. Thank you for cooking. What's your favorite part? Do you know you're going to turn on the light to film? No. The best thing about making my own videos is that if they look like shit, mm -hmm. nobody cares. What you doing? Uh, getting those mats ready to place the TV down flat now. Mm -hmm. This next one's a two-person. All we're going to do is lift up from the side, one on each, and we're going to place it face down on your couch cushions. This is much lighter than my TV. <laughs> Why didn't they give it to them? Holding. What does that mean? It's when you uh, grab a player. Oh. Do you want a chestnut? No. It is way easier to buy it pre-cooked. Mm -hmm. I spent $6 trying to cook chestnuts from raw and it was a complete failure. I completely forgot about the passion fruit. It looks really sad. <laughs> Let's eat it. A little bit of lime, a little bit of jasmine, a little bit of pineapple, it smells so good. a little whiff of mango. Mm. Let's eat it with some sweetened yogurt. I'm gonna say it right now, banana flavored dairy, underrated. You can fight me on that if you want, but you're wrong. As far as how it pairs with the passion fruit, amazingly, because they are both tropical flavors, a little bit of fragrance, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of creaminess. And if you like texture in your food, the little poppy crunchy things are sour. Passion fruit is very sour, almost lemon lime me. So you do need some sweetener to go with it. Perfect on sweetened yogurt. So I think the only thing we haven't eaten from our haul are these preserved duck eggs, but you know what? I've had these before. And if you haven't, maybe we'll have to make a separate video for it. You let me know down in the comments below. I'll see you next time.